Hi, I'm Julian Harris, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Happy here with us, thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbaugh. We you today, as always, our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingle. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing great. Hello, everybody. How are you, Jakey? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. Yes, good, wonderful. Good. Who, who do we have for today? Well, today's guest we have for today, he's a composer. Some of you may know his composing work. Especially for being part of some Puyallup's Disney series, including Bear in the Big Blue House, The Book of Pooh, and many other shows that we will touch base on that he's work, they worked on over the years. And please welcome Mr. Julian Harris. Happy to have you here, Julian. How are you? All right. I'm good. I'm, re- I'm very, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted in your interest in this work in general and my work. So it's uh, very, very cool. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm sure. happy to be here. Yes. So uh, to kick things off, so we know who you are, but for those who don't know you, could you tell our audience a bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, I am a a musician at heart and a guitar player at heart. Uh, and that's that's how I came up um, when I got to New York in about 1984. Uh, I was, um, part of me wanted to be going to music school and, uh, but at that time, they didn't really have music school for for rockers, for lack of a better word. It was just jazz. Like if you wanted to go to Berkeley, you had to be a jazz player. And I was much more into rock and pop, and I was very into recording and production. And uh, so I just went to a regular college, Columbia University, uh, in um, in uh, New York City. And started, um, when I got out of school, I, I got a recording studio in my bedroom on the Upper West Side and played in bands, uh, various bands, played at all the clubs, CBGB's, Cat Club, um, the Ritz. And always, I used to, back, back in the day before the internet, there was this thing called the Village Voice, which was a, a, a physical newspaper. And... Um, you people would take ads out either advertising their recording studio or their services or whatever it is. I took a small out um, looking for people to record in my little eight track studio. Back then it was a, it was a reel to reel. I I had it in the bedroom of an apartment. I rented from a couple on the upper West side. And uh, I just started producing demos for people, all sorts of crazy people. I mean, this was the the late eighties. I guess the late eighties and uh, rap was just kind of starting out and hip hop and dance and it was kind of, it just all, all kinds of people rolled through my door and it was all, they would call up and leave a message on my answering machine and I would call them back and, and we would set up recording sessions. Uh, so that's really, really how I got started. Um, and in, in, please interrupt me any moment so if we want to figure out how I got into the TV scoring thing. Um, but uh, I finally got got an apartment uh, on the also upper upper west side, and uh, had my recording studio set up. And down the hall from me, there was the coolest guy uh, who had moved in, and I I didn't know him. Uh, he was a black guy with dreadlocks. And I'd see him come and go with with drumsticks, and I, I knew he was someone. And it turned out he was Tony James from Out of the Box. I don't know if you guys remember Out of oh, the wow. Box. Oh, nice. yes. wow. Yes. Yeah, wonderful show. Wonderful show. So Tony James was living down the hall, and he was playing drums. At that time, he had just gotten off the road with Cindy Lauper, and he was in a band called um, Maggie's Dream beautiful band they were signed to Capitol records and we became fast friends and just that was an incredible year living there he had this apartment down the hall it was 
all fixed up. It was like his first bachelor pad. Mine was my first apartment. And we would just be back and forth recording demos for each other and collab. We wrote some great songs together. We had uh, Jeffrey Gaines come in and play and uh, met some great people. Um, and one of the people who he introduced me to, a uh, great guy named David Yazbek. I don't know if you guys are familiar with David Yazbek. He was he yeah. did a lot of he did a lot of writing for Bear. Uh, he's mm -hmm. a Broadway writer. He wrote the full Monty, um, and we all worked together and played together. And then he, Dave, it was Dave Yazbek who knew a guy named Peter Lurie. Yep, good who, friend of ours. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Of course. These all he's these awesome. all these pill these characters are all part of the puzzle. And um, Peter, David Yazbek recommended me to Peter Lurie as a guitar player, just to uh, for the some TV show that Peter Lurie was working on. I didn't know anything about it. So, and of course, Peter Lurie was also on the Upper West Side and is still on the Upper West Side. And uh, I went down to his studio with my guitar and put up the video and my, my guitar, there was the microphone up on the screen came bear in the big blue house there was the bear and we started we were he was writing the music for can't remember if the pilot was already done and this was already the first season it's possible At any rate we started writing all the music for uh bear in the big blue house and not only the underscoring but it was also sort of the the music the recurring music so for example there was a uh you know, there was the theme was already written, but then there were to be little, you know, little endings. Let me get my pick so I can play a little more clearly. You know, that would be like da 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 da. You know, all those little kind of interstitial things, and then there was the goodbye music. Which oh, wow! Oh, uh, that's beautiful. This is the end of the show where the bear you know, walks up to see the moon. Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. There we go. Um, and so, uh, and we had a great time together. Uh, Peter was, in fact, I, I'm still friends with him on Facebook. I haven't seen him in a little while. I keep meaning to get together. Um, but we had a great time and I, I recorded, you know, hours and hours there with him. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, he, he looked at me and said, Julie, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting real busy. You know, can you just do this? And I said, yeah, I, I think I could probably do it. So I, they gave me a show and I took it home now. And of course this is really, it's not pre hard, hard disc recording, but it wasn't quite, I mean, the hard disk recording was like we still had VHS tapes that we would get and we'd have to sync mm. up to the VHS tape. Uh, cut a long story short, I did a good job on the one of the episodes and then season two, three, four, from then on out, I took over and um, scored the rest of those shows. Uh, also had an opportunity to write some of the songs, although the, mostly my role was was uh, recording the under the sort of underscore music. Um, I did write some of the some some of the songs that I'm happy about. One was um, do do, uh, do your thing. I think yes. Oh yes. yes. Uh, do, we are, we are, we're Bear and Trilo, just yes. a little duo on yeah. that song. Like, do your thing. Exactly. Na, na, na. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. one. So. And uh, I pulled actually my friend Maria Christensen. Uh, I pulled her in to help me write that. I co-wrote that with her, Maria Christensen, beautiful singer, songwriter, because I was also very much in the pop world, writing pop songs and recording demos. Uh, she wrote the song Waiting for Tonight, actually, by um, Jennifer Lopez. So she was like a big songwriter, and uh, she helped me write that one. Um, what was another song I wrote? Uh, we Are Different. I oh, yeah, that. yeah. That's I a great one. Yes. With Mitchell, and I don't know if that was just me and Mitchell. I can't remember if there's a third writer on that. I think it must have been Brian. Maybe, um, possibly, possibly. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, song. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I can keep rambling, but did, did you want to jump in and ask, uh, or, or is there anything you wanted to comment on? Or yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. So like before kind of becoming a uh, you know composer, like what was your uh, childhood like? Oh, like did you God. always want to be a composer? Uh, I don't know if I wanted to be. I, I definitely wanted to be a to write songs and write music. Um, I really. Uh, I'm trying to think i as a very small kid i played recorder i always loved mm. music i came from a musical family my brother plays the oboe my dad plays the banjo and the flute so it was a musical family um but it wasn't until about fifth or sixth grade that i really started getting into music and that would have been the band boston i don't know if you guys remember boston more than a few mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh kiss oh yeah yeah. Which, mm -hmm. which was very theatrical. I mm -hmm. loved rock music. And then I picked up a guitar and really, honestly, I just wanted to be a rock star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which, of course, is also composing, writing songs. Right. Um, and then I, I uh, a, lot, a bunch of things happened. I went to a cool music school called ECA in New Haven, Connecticut, which was a great sort of uh, performing arts high school. Mm. And then uh, I went and lived in, as an exchange student in Europe, in Berlin for a year. And when I came back, a friend of mine was in a band at Yale called Busload of Nuns. That was the name of the band. And he had to leave, and I joined that band as a bass player. And they were a couple of years older than me, uh, and they were very into production and recording and the gear. And that's when I really started to get a taste of not only like I, I liked being a player, but I loved the equipment and the studio. And it, any and and that's when I just knew that anything to do with music is what I wanted to do. Whatever, whatever it was going to take. I mean, of course, I was always still had my eye to be in rock bands. And for a long time in New York in the '80s and '90s, I was in bands showcasing for record companies back back then of course there was no internet or TikTok or anything like that and the only way to sort of make it as a in the in the music rock industry is that if you got signed by a record label and of course that that was like that was like getting into harvard basically i mean that was very difficult and i was in some bands that were good and we turned down some indie deals, which was sort of a mistake. Probably should have, that was when indie labels were just starting out. Um, and I, I played some great shows and made some great records, but that, that ship didn't really come in in terms of being in a famous rock band. But what did was having a recording studio for many, many years. Um, I had Treehouse Studios uh, in Chelsea on, on West 25th Street, which is where all the bear... I did all the bear recording um, and sheep in the big city and Yu-Gi-Oh and um, but to answer your question, how did the how did the composing come in? Um, it was it was really a little bit by accident. I mean, it was it was like I was a decent guitar player. I knew how to to record myself. So not only could I get could I get up and play guitar and but I could capture it myself and I could do it to picture and another another uh, person who i met is this guy richard fioka who's an associate of mine who i still work with and he was doing uh a lot of stuff for national geographic and discovery channel and so i worked a lot with him uh and a, a big interestingly one of the big jobs that i landed with him through him with him was a news show called 48 hours a cbs news show and mm -hmm. we we wrote we landed the theme for that in 1997, and to this day we still are writing for that show for 48 hours CBS, nice. um, which is a really nice and and interestingly that, that that is a that's a crime TV show that's adult crime so it's very funny that my 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 scoring has gone from kids television to crime, yeah <laughs> <Those are laughs> yeah the two places yeah. where I've I've sort of uh had some notoriety i mean really had a had a had a great career um 
in, in, for you know. Uh, another another company I worked for during that time was a company called Man Made Music. Um, really good. They had a st also a studio in Chelsea, and I, I I got some. I landed some. Won some nice themes. One one theme I landed through them was for the New York Knicks. Um, oh wow! Which was hmm. a, a lot. And, and again, a lot of this music stuff. It is. It's very competitive obviously it's all competitive but when i say i mean it's literally competitive where you've got like 20 other people that are submitting a theme and you got to get you got to win it mm -hmm. and that was one that i was very lucky to to well lucky to win i wrote a good theme but with that being said i mean when i think about the hundreds and hundreds of demos that i did for stuff that i did not win <laughs> i mean it's it's brutal Right, so you so you really celebrate those those wins. Absolutely. Yep. So uh, yeah. during during the first two seasons of Bear, you were kind of touching up on it earlier. You were the lead guitar player for the show before eventually taking over. Could you kind of talk about what that was like? Yeah. Well, the the okay. Uh, so Mitchell, uh, I love I miss Mitchell. I. I I, I'm still in touch with Mitchell, and I, I speak with him fair, from time to time. Uh, Mitchell loves guitar. Mitchell is a guitar player. He's he writes beautiful songs, and he really has a great feel for guitar. And um, he he knew that he wanted to get someone on his show. It, it, the concept for his show, the music was this. It, it was it, it's called "Merrily We Roll Along." In other words, you're walking along, and then you hear a little. Do, 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 do. They, they go along they do so it's not like it's constant underscoring it's very much answering and and little you know little just sort of you know you know little moments and, and, and right also, also yeah very much uh kids television uh you know you know sometimes they'd just be very little things and it required a guitar player who was you know could play uh, but could also sort of understand that each little, very small little pieces of DNA of music uh, can very easily evoke an emotion. You know, like this is, you know, that can be very much like, uh, like the otters, a little mischievous or this, you know. You know, all those little pieces were just in itself enough to, so he wanted it very sparse, and he wanted the guitar to be the main instrument. And so that's how I sort of became the, the, the lead guitarist for the bear. Now, there were also, uh, as it developed, there were other instruments that he liked. For example, uh, accordion. Uh, I worked oh, yeah. mm -hmm. very closely with it, with uh, Rob Curto, who was he was my right-hand or left-hand accordion player. Uh, I remember people would ask me, you know, how do you do it? Do you sit in the studio and look at the picture and right i said absolutely i sit there with my guitar there's rob over here with his accordion we press player the bear the bear does this and he does vroom, you know and so we really score the action as it merrily it rolls along um an interesting little side note on that is um another uh really interesting job that i got because of bear was doing the uh the sonic branding and underscoring for the, the the flagship Toys R Us store in Times Square. I don't, you guys might be too young to remember, but in Times Square, there was a huge Toys R Us store with a Ferris wheel in the store. Yeah, right. And it I was the, the, this guy Phil Langer, who who is in the digital signage business. He Toys R Us had hired him to do all the AV visual aspects of the store. Now, Phil had a couple of young kids and he had been watching Bear in the Big Blue House. He said, I want that guy to do the music for the Toys R Us store because I love the way it's sparse. It's this merrily, we, you know, you kind of walk along and then you hear some sounds. You walk along. And so I ended up, he reached out to me and ended up doing all the music for the, uh, for the Toys R Us store, very much guitar oriented. Um, and by the way, before I forget, another person I just wanted to shout out to is Matt, Matthew Galkin. I don't know if you know him. He he was head of all the music uh, and mixing and 
production for for bear and just a wonderful oh, okay. creative um advisor along with mitchell i mean oftentimes uh they would review the scores ahead of time hand me back a pile of notes and i would grumble and then realize that they were right and then change change things uh once we once we got it down to uh when i was doing there was a time when i was doing literally two episodes a week it was an intense schedule uh there was we we would get it right maybe there'd be a, a 10 10 or 12 notes on a score i'd get it knock it out send it back and that was it um so yeah nice yeah and bear bear's such a wonderful show i'm happy it's on disney plus now it's been on disney plus now for a little over a year yeah i'll tell you that that was there was uh for so many years when it went off air i was just i was so upset because i mean i there were all these sort of memes like free bear you know let's let's get bear out of the you know and, and then yeah, right. i uh i recently uh well i have a seven-year-old daughter now and yeah. when at right at the time when she would have been just the right age for bear it was still uh, not released and then just when she was just still young enough to to enjoy it it it, it uh was released and so i've been thrilled that she's been able to watch it on on Disney Plus, and and of course, yeah, I, I'm just thrilled that it's back on the air. Um, Absolutely, you mm -hmm. know, it just makes you feel like you're. I mean, for a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons, yeah. right? Know. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so since um, you already kind of touched base about the songs that you wrote, I'm kind of curious. Do you have like any favorite bear song in general? Ah, uh, what are some of my bear songs in general? Well, uh. Let, let me think about that for a second. I, it would be before you say anything. I just wanted to quick quickly say um about what I said earlier. That was actually Peter Lurie was the one who did the third third person road. We're all different. Oh, Peter Lurie did. Yes, Peter Lurie. That yeah, it, it was yeah. it was both you, Mitchell, and Peter. I I love the Otter rap. Um, oh yeah, that was one that I did not write, but I did the track for. Um, I love the. I mean, there. Gosh, the bear cha cha cha. Classic, yes. Classic, yes. That's um, a classic. There's so and, many great songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah there are yeah, a honestly, lot. and they're so hard to choose. And they're quirky. And uh, Brian Woodbury, just a beautiful writer, and Mitchell and Dave Yazbek, they were just always uh, interesting. And there were a couple of other writers who I, I'm um, forget. Uh, pardon me if I'm forgetting them, but uh, I mean, in terms of a favorite. I mean, I do love the goodbye song, and of course, that's, yeah. that's like a permanent song. And I liked, I liked that piece, the little piece I played earlier, that little interstitial mu uh, music that walks up to the goodbye, goodbye song. I always thought mm -hmm. that was beautiful. I, I also, I also like the little uh, music piece that, uh, like at at the end, where Bear's in the attic and he says goodbye. Oh yeah! yeah. Oh that, my that gosh! Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yeah yeah so um. So I just think it was such a uh, such a musical show, and uh, I'm I'm happy that, I mean right right now, uh, as as I mentioned, I have a seven year old daughter, and she's very interested in music and singing. Um, I should also mention my my son. I have an older son who who was very much um, he he's 23 now, um, and he so while I was working on Bear, he was a young he he was able to come to the set and see uh visit the bear a couple of times he's actually in a rock band now um oh nice yeah i'll tell you guys about that i'll plug it a little bit now remember i mentioned earlier that in my earlier in my career i really wanted to be in a rock band and have a record deal and that was my dream so jasper my son jasper who's 23 has picked up that torch and he is now in a rock band that is doing very, very well. And they did get a record deal. Remember, he was going to he was going to music school. He went to music school. He's the first in my family to go to music school. And he said, Dad, I think I want to drop out of music school. I was like, oh, come on, man. Why? He, I said, listen, if you guys get, I wanted to be in my band. I said, if you guys get a record deal, you can, I said, man, you can drop out. He calls me a week later. Dad, 
we got a record deal. I'm making fun of the way he talks. He doesn't really talk like that, but you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so his band is called Quarters of Change, and they they just got signed. Well, pretty recently they got signed to Electra Records, and they are um, they're playing um, Webster Hall uh, next month, December 9th. Um, and they're like, I'm just so proud of him and, and, uh, his music. And it's very much in, in the family and it, it's really passed down and all the studio, all the studio production that I've done. I mean, he would come up while I was scoring bear shows and sit with me and watch. And now that now he is also very into the studio and producing and has this band, which has really exceeded my expectations. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Definitely. That's that's wonderful. Um, so speaking of um, Mitchell, Pierre, and Brian, we actually previously speak with, t with three of them in the past. Yeah, they're wonderful. That's so cool. So you, did you do, um, and I, I want to, I, I didn't get it. I want to follow up on and look at some of your interviews. I, uh, I'm assuming they're, they're online and all ready yeah. to watch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to, uh, uh, check that out. Um, is there a one with Mitchell and, and Peter and Brian already up? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. All three of them yeah. yeah. A while ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And are they, do you interview them together or separately? No, separately. Yeah. separately. Yeah, and um, uh, and Pierre, he says hello. By the way, fantastic. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach out to him as soon as. And I know I know Brian will 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 say hello to you too. Yeah. So. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. They're one yes. one for one for people. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, speaking of uh, Mitchell and Brian, you worked with them on another show. Of course, you mentioned uh, the Book of Pooh. What what was it like working on that show? That was really interesting, and um. A very it was a real departure from bear in the scoring because it, it ended up being a lot more orchestral um and which i also do i brought in some people to help me out with that uh, richard fioco who i mentioned before and a guy named peter Keyswalter, uh helped me on those scores and um that was uh I tell you, I, I, it's it's a little bit more of a blur that whole period. It got very very busy, because then then another show that uh, which was really cool that I was working on at the same time is called Sheep in the Big City. I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. are familiar mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. with um, with Mo Willems, uh, Mo Willems, who's subsequently gone on to be a very very successful children's author. Oh yes, yeah, mm -hmm. he wrote that book, uh, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Yes, very popular yes, book. Very yeah. Popular. yeah, that his ship, the sheep in the big city, was a a little too quirky, esoteric. Um, I don't. It, it, we did we did two seasons on Cartoon Network, and then I don't know. It was a little. It was a little. It was a little out there. I have to say, a little odd. Uh, great music, though. I I worked a lot very closely with this guy named Jim Hines, a trumpet player. So it was a very jazzy score with guitar and trumpet. Um, but uh, back to Book of Pooh, I mean, the, the the thing about Book of Pooh that was incredible was the technology and just the whole world that Mitchell created. It was really, I mean, the, the, he was at the cutting edge of CGI and, and that, I mean, what he was able to do was just unbelievable and a, and a beautiful show. And of course, such a famous, such a famous uh such a big title you know everybody right knows the poo. yeah so it was uh, i really felt honored to be a part of that team definitely absolutely so similarly with bear do you have any favorite book of poo songs oh boy i you know i can't i i wish i could i wish i could pull out and say say you'd have to remind me of some of them uh well, of course there's a theme song the theme song the theme is wonderful song. yeah <laughs> I believe a Brian Woodbury. Is that Brian Woodbury? Uh, Probably, uh, yeah. He wrote a lot of songs so. for that show. That one I yeah. did. I didn't do uh, except for the open. I did something in the open. I didn't do many of the songs. I did. Uh, I did all the the underscoring and right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you mentioned the, the theme song, like you did the little like guitar thing at the like beginning of it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. 
Absolutely. I remember, I remember working on that. I remember, and Mitchell's always so funny because he'll, he calls you up and he's so casual and I'm, he's like, oh, can you do that? Can you write it? I went back and forth a little bit. And before I know it, that was, you know, that was the theme. That was the opening, uh, the opening for the show, for the whole show. I mean, I, I and, and there it was. It was, it, it was just. Yeah, and the, the great thing about the Book of Pooh is a lot of uh, the bear puppeteers worked on yeah. Book of Pooh as well. Well, there's definitely a lot mm -hmm. of such a, when you get a, functioning team and a good group of people you want to keep it together and yeah uh -huh. yeah right? all those puppeteers just doing all that in one just for one character yeah you know, like a little group just for I, just my favorite character was definitely the the tigger character i really yeah oh yes enjoyed him so much yeah oh yeah and of course um the close um goodbye for goodbye for now is that what it's called oh yeah yeah the ending, yeah. Yep. theme yeah yep. no, it's time yeah yeah the book yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I also so there were some in, in Sheep in the Big City there were a lot of interesting and funny songs. Um I don't know if you guys are familiar with that but but um I I'm hoping that 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 show comes back one day. Another show that I wrote songs for was Yu-Gi-Oh. Believe it or not, you don't think of that as having songs, but there were there were songs in there, the Chimmy Chimmy Cheerio, very sort of hard rock metal songs. It was a great opportunity to explore that. Um, I did the whole third season of Yu-Gi-Oh! It was called Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Um, most of Yu-Gi-Oh! is very or orchestral, but this particular season was all rock guitar, heavy metal guitar, and I just went to town. Uh, and that was that was really, really fun. Hey, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a neat little show, yeah. I think it was on, like, 4Kids TV or one of those... Uh, exactly, yep. Yeah. Channels. yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was a good show. I'm so curious, of course, to find out about you guys. You know, uh, I, I think it's just great that you guys are uh, doing this show and and in, your interest. I, I, can you give me a little little rundown on on what you guys are up to? Well, I mean, like, how did the the podcast kind of begin? Is without what you're asking? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Well, it, it kind of started with Jake. Well, yeah, because that because yeah, my name my, my name is on the show name yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that, that's obvious yeah. <laughs> so um gosh so um so before i started the show i kind of have a tiny bit of like experience with like interviewing but it was different it was kind of different where because back then it was where i first like um interviewing the people the community that me and chris are, are so a part of and um and then and like then, he would like he would interview like mostly his good friends and right. yeah. you know stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then I remember we did like a well I I did like a other like podcast and that was only happened just only one episode <laughs> and then and then that kind of um turns down and then you know, didn't really didn't do too much and then so it was during the summer of twenty twenty one so that's like you know two years ago which yeah. is podcast is over two years now i remember one day i was like you know it'd be cool if i make like some some, some sort of like a nostalgic nostalgic podcast and then you know and then i t and then i told chris you know hey, you want to be yeah want to do this and then and then you know and then he wants to do it and then then and then uh when when the show's already got off the ground um 21 episodes later mac Again, yeah, I I joined I joined again, the show no, in yep I joined the show in January of 2022. So mm -hmm. as Jake said, like right as it kind of started getting off the ground a little bit, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, and three of us we grew up with with such a lot of variety shows, especially Bear and Book of Pooh, and you know, lots of other Playhouse yeah, Disney, of, Junior, you know, all the things. So and I'm glad that we, we, that we love what we're, what we're doing, and you know, and we, we just been doing it, and that's kind of you know, that's over two good. years, we're we're still doing it. Yeah, yeah, and for me, originally when I joined the podcast, I uh, wasn't originally I wasn't going to be a co-host. Originally, the idea was that I would help out behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but then because I've had you know previous podcast co-hosting experience. Uh, with another podcast called the DJ Bob Show, which is a wonderful, uh, 
wonderful podcast. Um, yeah, DJ Bob, he is so wonderful. Great, great buddy of ours. He's, yes, he's wonderful. He's doing he's doing his own podcast for over thirteen years. Wow. And he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's 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 such a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah, and so he's I nice. asked. Kind of, he kind of like. I think is he, he, Bob, he yeah, help Bob he help Gerard? us with our show too. Is that what's his last name? But Gerard is that. Uh, a runkle a runkle yeah 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 but bob bob runkle yeah yep yeah yeah he's he's wonderful so yeah basically i just used my experience co-hosting that show and asked jake if he was looking for any more co-hosts and i kind of helped jake kind of come up with the name because we were kind of struggling with that, so I kind of yeah, helped uh -huh. him then, come up with the name. And then Jake's happy nostalgia, because nostalgia just kind of brings, you know, happiness. happy joy, yeah. happiness about, you know, the happiness past and everything in the show, yeah. and then, you know, then you know, Jake's happy nostalgia show, and there you go. Yep, you know, the rest is history. Yes. Yep. You also got to do some underscoring for the PBS series Cyber Chase, as well as co-writing the show's theme. Uh, could you kind of talk a bit about Cyber Chase and what that was all about? Beautiful show. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, well, what, once you get in, once you start get in, in into a circle, your name starts getting out there, and that's when I I think it was someone named Jill Peters, who lovely woman. She was at PBS. She called me up and had seen my work with Bear, and she's like, "Do you want to do Cyber Chase?" And I had never done. Well, I guess Bear technically is live action. But but the cyber chase was actual, you know, real actors, and I really felt like I was scoring a movie for that. Uh, and it was a lot of it was to do with math, and um, that was just uh, it was really neat. It felt much more, even though it was a kids show, it felt very adult in a way. I mean, very if, like drama, and yeah. and um, and I I did a, a a number of episodes of that um also around the same time um yeah. i'm trying to think you know it's it's funny that you mentioned that because there were some other i did there was for um for uh cartoon network there was also a barbie show that was briefly out i did something about for barbie i have to look into that there was like an animated barbie show uh there was cyber chase um there was Sheep in the Big City. I'm trying to think if there was any other kids stuff. I'm sure there must have been. Oh, well, they, of course. Oh, another, another show was one. You know, there's always one that got away. There was a show called. So I was doing uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, as I mentioned. And then the same people, four kids, called me up to do a show called Mew Mew Power, which is also Japanese anime. And it was really cool, really dark. I mean, if you're all from, I mean, Japanese anime is dark to begin with, but this, yeah, was, right. You mm -hmm. know, and I was designated to be the sole composer on it, and it was all going to be this kind of twisted rock music. And I must have done about five or six episodes, and it was coming out great. And then I think what happened is they couldn't close the deal with the Japanese company or something like that. And so it ended up getting shelved after a while, hmm. uh, which was a bummer. Uh, so that was a good one. But I, I, I bring up these other ones because I had almost forgotten about Cyber Chase. Uh, also a neat show. Yeah. Yeah, and it's still running. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah after all those seasons, still, still yeah. going. Long time. It's awesome. Yes. Yes, and... um. And uh, going back to the Book of Pooh for a second, um, Julia and yes, Brian did the composing for for the for the theme. Yeah, yeah. that song. Everybody right. knows sure. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, and Brian's yeah. Out there doing a lot of his own albums and his yeah. Own... Oh yeah, yeah, great stuff. He also does some. He does some nice. He takes some walks in his near his house. I saw that on. He's uh, he 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 shares his walks on Facebook sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also with the book oh, of Brian. Pooh, you know, not ever, not everyone knows this, but um, for for those who have not seen our uh, interview with Brian Woodbury, we talk about the uh, closing and how he his vocals were actually on that closing song. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 
Wow, I have to. I got. I got to go as soon as I. I'm gonna go back and look at all these interviews because uh, I'm. I'm really interested. A, a, an interesting note about having one's own voice on something. Um, so, I did. Um, I wrote the theme for Sheep in the Big City, and it had some very intricate lyrics. They were this, ba, 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 ba. Those were the lyrics, and I sang that theme as part of the theme and ended up for that reason be, be, getting into the SAG after guilt guild guild uh, union because right. once you sing on something you're considered an actor which I which I thought was very funny <laughs> and it, it ended up being I mean, just on a little business a business note I was able to sort of get get health insurance for five years or something like that because just because I went bah on a, on a, on a theme. There's a couple of other commercials that I we put my voice on, but there was this whole period of time where, you know, that was the Holy grail. If you could get your voice onto something, there was a whole nother route to sort of uh, be compensated or whatever. Just a little interesting footnote. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, uh, moving forwards, um, what I uh, write now, uh, I still write a lot of music. I write music. I mean, interestingly, uh, one, of course, Book of Pooh and Bear and all these shows, we would score them top to bottom. I'd sit there. Um, towards the later episodes, there would be cues. And when I say a cue, that's a little piece of music that would become so important and that people liked so much that you would reuse them. So I would start, you'd start creating a library of cues and the idea of a music library started to take off. And now of course, music library, almost all shows, there many, television shows are not there. They, they no longer have a composer who specifically writes for the show. They often just, they use a music library, for example, APM library or Soundstripe or killer tracks. Uh, and that's something that I've done more recently. I write for, for many libraries. So for example, if you go to the APM library, which is one of the big libraries and type in Julian Frederick Harris, I have about 400, four or 500 tracks of music that are in that library. Um, oh, nice. They're just sort of waiting mm. to be used. So for example, every once in a while, I'll, I'll look at my uh, BMI statement and I'll see, oh, it looks like someone, this was used for a tennis show in Italy or something. And you'll get a very, of course, it's very small amounts of, but you'll get a little royalty. Um, but that's something I do now. I write from, for music libraries. Uh, I have a, a, I'm just starting a new band. It doesn't even have a name yet. Uh, and I'm trying to keep up with my son, Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but still I, I, in the basement, I have a whole, uh, studio set up with drums and, uh, I, I actually, uh, I, I, I it, it's hard to find musicians. So I, 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 um, I made posters and I hung them around my neighborhood in Brooklyn. Uh, looking for singers and musicians and I got great response and picked the best players and I'll let you know when that when we're ready to when we're ready for prime time. Awesome. 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 Glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now you eventually move on to compose for various four kids entertainment projects. Can you talk a bit about your work with them? Yeah, four kids uh, well, the funny thing about four kids is that, well, Treehouse, where my studio was, was on West 25th street and four kids was on 24th street, right around the corner. There they are. And, and then, and, and also Peter Lurie studio was like on 22nd street. So everybody all in Chelsea, they're all, everybody sort of, I mean, we would meet for lunch. Some, so, uh, how did I get into four kids originally, originally, um, Gosh, I, I'm blanking on, it must have been, there was a guy named John Sands who was there. 
Uh, but anyway, the first show I started doing was uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and that was very heavy guitar oriented. Uh, and there was there was a pro. Oftentimes, there's a, there, there was a program called Acid, which was made by Sony at the time. It was done. It was on the PC, and I remember I did all the four kids work in in this in this program called Acid. Not a lot of people used it, but it was like my secret weapon. It was a brilliant program. Uh, just be, its ease of use and using samples, and I could work very quickly. Unfortunately, I think it's just been since then discontinued, but um, I was able to do some great scores uh, for four kids. And they also put me on, um, I think, uh, I think Pokemon. I did some Pokemon stuff through them and maybe there was some, uh, oh, 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 Sonic the Hedgehog they were doing. Um, I ended up doing a lot of different stuff. Uh, I, you know, once once you were in there, you ended up working on a lot of different things. So, uh, and th that was the, that was a lot of fun. Um, I had a uh, few producers there, a guy named Julian um, Schwartz, who I was still talk to sometimes. He was a producer there. John Sands was a producer there. Uh, um, um, Brian Malone. So yeah, that was really neat. I mean, there was a period of time where I had a, I mean. Between the four kids, Yu-Gi-Oh, Bear, Sheep, Pooh. I mean, I had a, a big basket of uh, shows. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of uh, composing for a lot of shows, you also have done underscoring for a number of uh, reality series. Can you talk about some of the ones that you uh, worked on? Yeah. Uh, so there's um, Down... Uh, one call. Oh well, I did one called Hardcore Pawn, <laughs> not to be er, and Pawn Stars, not to be confused with the, the as in a pawn shop, like where you go to buy used guitars and jewelry. So right. those were very popular sort of reality shows. There was there was another one called um, Northwest Northwoods Law, uh, yeah, which was oh yeah. I did a lot of music for that, and that was with my friend uh, and partner Richard Fioka. Um, and it was always funny because that was such a departure from kids' TV, right? I mean, those were definitely very adult. And then, of course, it went into crime. Uh, we did 48 Hours in the first 48. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there were many, many... I mean, we, we were just there crank... It's, it, I mean... It, we were just cranking it out. We had a wonderful studio on 25th Street on the 11th floor. Um, and there was Richard Fioka there had a studio. I had a studio. Max Serla had a studio. He's done some, a lot of interesting stuff. And I, I guess we were there for 20 years. And we would just, we'd have lunch every day together. We each had a studio. Uh, Peter would come by sometimes. Mitchell would come by. Uh, Mo Willems would come by. And it was a, a really bubbling scene. And, and um, if, I, if, if my computer was broken, I could walk down the hall and someone could come help me. If Richard needed a quick guitar riff, I could go in and play it. Uh, and it was, a, it was a really neat scene. It, eventually, it just started to get, they, raised, they, they just started raising the rents. And uh, it, it was funny because when we first got there, what must have been in 1997 it was pretty uh dodgy in a way it was it was not the way it was now uh i remember on the third floor there was a rap studio like the real real gangster rap they were they were called the henchmen and in fact we saw 50 cent in there a couple times and they were on the third floor and i i would joke my brother who's in front a a business guy, I would joke, I would say, ah, he, he was looking for office. He should take, get an office space in my building sometime. And he's like, ah, no way. That's way too crazy down there. Now, of course, a hedge fund ended up taking over Treehouse Studios and it became just way too expensive. And we all moved back into our respective homes. Treehouse still exists, but it's kind of, 
in the in the ether, right? We all have our separate home studios again. Definitely. Yes, and the, oh yeah, and the other show you're you're part of um, barbecue the, masters. The, the yeah, barbecue yeah. masters. Now, it's interesting because I I'm sure you're right about that. However, like I don't know if I would have that may fall into the library. Um, like that, I might have had music that was in a library that got selected for a show like that because I oh, I can't, okay I can't remember specific. I mean, if I were to look in my be my, I don't know if you guys know what um, BMI is. Do you know what BMI is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So BMI is the, the, the it stands for uh, broadcast music, and they're 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 the people who track all your music that's out there. And when I look at my statement, there are tons and tons of shows on there that I've barely even, even heard of. There's Cook Yourself Thin um, and uh, Tennis Show. So I have a great deal of music out there that has been selected from libraries and put into these shows. Um, so, you know, after the fact. Um, so I really don't know much about the shows except that they use some of my music for the show and i'm right. thrilled of course i'm thrilled when that happens and I, I would say the barbecue show would be one of those um falls into that category makes sense yeah definitely yeah, uh, yeah. and i'm trying to think uh i mean they're just so uh, other other things well uh, uh, one thing that was sort of unrelated to um to tv scoring was just working on demos and rec uh, working on records pop records jazz records uh there's a record i produced that i'm very proud of for um an artist named kiku collins she's a trumpet player uh, she plays for beyonce she plays in her band and um you know while i was doing Bear in the Big Blue House and all these other shows. I was working on jazz records, and so she she lived she actually lives on a, on Twenty Fifth Street also. So she would come in and record. Um, there was uh, so I was always loved doing records, songwriting, um, and that kind of thing. In addition to uh, uh, a score underscores and that kind of thing. Nice, yeah. Awesome. So aside from working in music, you also work in film production. Can you talk about your work during that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I um, later in life, uh, I decided I, to, to add some skills, add some tools to my tool belt. And one of them was shooting with cameras and uh, and editing. So I also know how to uh, how to edit and um do uh video production uh, i worked on a show called oh that reminds me of another show i did a reality show called um two interesting shows one was called what not to wear for the bbc and the other was called uh one week to save your marriage those were shows i did the music for and i did those through my friend boaz Halliban, who was a tv producer and uh, we worked on a show called bouncers that was a show that I, I personally tried to create. Uh, it was going to be a show all about, I can't remember. I think the reason why I came up with that idea is because I lived above a club and they were always playing loud music and I would go down there and try to get them to be quiet. And one day I was so mad, I actually got bounced. The bouncer actually bounced, picked me up, who I knew him. He was a friend of mine. He's like, man, don't make me do this to you. Don't make me do that. And I was like, ah. Oh. And he picked me up and he bounced me out. And I, th I thought this would be a neat show to do a whole TV show about bouncers. Um, and um, so I scored that. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I produced it. It ended up not really going anywhere. But like I mentioned, me, me, much of our work doesn't go any. You got to work on a lot of things. I always say it's not it's not. Uh, it's not uh, it's quantity over quality and i know people that makes people's skin crawl but the reason why is because you can you can write two songs and work on them forever and they might both be terrible 
right? And however long you work on them, they're not going to really get much better. If you write 20 songs, you might get one good one. And that, 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 that's, you know, what I would say to artists, aspiring artists, songwriters is you have to be prolific. You got to write every day, write lots of songs, write with, collaborate, write with different people. And eventually you'll come up with a good one. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Um, and I still do, uh, my, my, my wife, Sonal, she's a marketing guru and, um, I help her sometimes with, she does a vi I mean, video, as you know, has become essential and very powerful in, in business and media. And, uh, so I help her with some of her video production. Um, and I, for the longest, for oftentimes I thought I, I, I would get worried. I was like, ah, the music thing is, you know, is that really going to keep going or is it? And so I added this other skill, but the music keeps going. <laughs> so knock knock wood. Absolutely. Knock wood. Yeah. Yes. Um and I'm still interested in creating uh content. I mean that's something I'm always to like toying around with making another kids show and of course now I have a, a 7-year-old daughter and she sings and she's beautiful and I we wonder about making a TV show with her and I I wonder sometimes we're all gung ho and ready to make it. And then we get nervous and we're like, oh, do we want to put her out there like that? Um, so that remains me. And I have a YouTube channel and I've put, I've published some things on YouTube, um, a few different little, but I haven't really hit that home yet. It's still, it's still going to come. I, I think I'm making a little doc. I, I am making a little documentary about this band that I'm starting now. Uh, where I hung up posters in the neighborhood to meet musicians, and and I will make a video on that, and I'll share it with you guys when it's when it's ready. Nice, wonderful, awesome. Uh, and I talk to sometimes I talk to Tony James about trying to do another show, and I I'm always thinking about what to create next. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any good ideas? I mean, you guys are already beautiful. You guys are making this incredible podcast, uh, which is just wonderful. And um, Thank you means a lot. And uh, what what about? Uh, do you guys have other projects that you work on? Uh, not really so much for me these days. Yeah, well, that's that's. Are you talking about like other things in general, except? Yeah, just show or, stuff. Or, yeah, just in general. Okay. Just yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I've recently, for about two years, I'm kind of starting to, starting to puppetry, and I have a YouTube channel where basically, um, I only have one character as of right now. But, um, the, my, so I have like a little green monster. His name is Bean. I'll, I'll, I'll send. I'll, sh I'll share it to you, so you can it. check it out if you want to. Um, so you know, he just does his own little little videos and and um just you know so now i can experience more about you know puppetry feel and all the and all, and all those things so yeah well that's great i mean yeah, and, and i've been doing puppetry for three and a half years i'll i guess i'll make him have a cameo i guess good <laughs> marty that's monster good. hello hello hey party um, monster. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, this is this is his uh, probably the only time you can see him this episode. Yep, uh, I've had him for three and a half years. I've been doing like live streams. I used to do them on Instagram. I do them on YouTube now, um, which is better off for us. Yes, as it should be. Yes. Um, but uh, I have three characters that I've had. One of them was introduced earlier in the year, uh, and you know Jake and I really connected through that. Uh, you'll notice um, if you folks have seen episodes the last couple of months, you've seen this Jim Henson poster back here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, a, a Jim Henson exhibition. As of the time of recording, this is uh, still going on. It's it's uh, kind of local out here where, where we are, at least to Jake and Matt anyway. A um, yeah. couple, couple of our friends and us, we actually met up in person. They're all uh, puppeteers, very good friends of ours uh two 
No, only one of them is a past guest. Oh, yeah, only one. Uh, we're planning to meet yeah. up with some mm-hmm. more uh, this coming March when we all head up to Richmond for GalaxyCon, which is going to be fun. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's just been wonderful. Thank I, you, Marty. I, I think it's yeah. fantastic that you guys are doing that. And you know, as my mind bubbles, as it does, I you know, let's make a show. Yeah. 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 I'd be down for that. That'd be great. I got, all yeah. the, I got all the gear. Yeah. I have lights and cameras. And yeah, yeah. We could, I know, I know, I know you're planning to at least in the early stages of one, you're planning to do. Um, yeah, it's it's in the early stages right now of development. Uh, I'm not does sure Party Monster it. sing? Is he can he sing? I do I do sing, yes. Um oh. I do sing. Um I haven't, I haven't really sang very much in a while, but uh, I do. I do sing. You could do some blue. Um, I, know I, you you could... do, uh, I know you used to do. I know you used to sing on some of the live streams. I still, I still do once in a while, but yeah. uh, we're trying to switch things up a little bit now. But I do, I do uh, sometimes. Yeah. I think he's great, and I can't wait to Thank meet you. you. Thank you. Can't yeah, wait. and uh, um, I, I oh, dabble. You're, in... you're gonna love Bean. You're gonna love Bean. He's great. I dabble in puppetry a little bit myself. I have my own. Uh, puppet. His name's Puppet Chris, and he it's was kind of, too. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of based off of a uh, Muppet whatnot that they used to sell at FEO Schwartz forever ago. Um, Not in business anymore. Yeah, no. yeah. No, it's no longer in business, unfortunately. I know. Oh. I know FEO oh. Schwartz has kind of come back, but it's not the same. Yeah, as it once was. Well, the landscape no. changes. The the interest. Everybody's still. They're still kids, and kids want to be kids. So yeah. yeah, in fact, going back quickly to bear, I remember seeing pictures of a like a bear kind of exhibit that took place at FAO Shorts years ago. Oh really? I, I oh, had no idea wow. about that. That's cool. Yeah, and it would have like different bear merch. I mean, I was I didn't go to it. I was too young at the time, but I saw pictures of it. Hmm. I did not know that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yes, and and here is being. Oh, there he Bean. is. There he oh. is. Hello, Bean. You're, Hi, very, you're a very, a very nice, a, a gentle monster. Aww. Yes. No, thank you. Oh, and, and you have a nice voice. And I bet you... No, thank you. He's very tiny, too. Much, very unlike, tiny. unlike yours, truly. Right, right, right. That's fantastic. Ha, ha, has Have you introduced these guys to Mitchell? Um... Uh, I don't. Well, Matt I don't, wasn't. I, I don't, Matt, I don't think, I don't so, think so. I don't think so. You were you, you weren't a co-host at the time, were you? Yeah, when we interviewed not, Mitchell, he wasn't not, a co-host yet. No. Not with Mitchell, but uh, you were yeah. you were you were you weren't really around much either, Bean. Were you? When when they no, he wasn't. Mitchell? No, when we interviewed Mitchell, he wasn't. No. I don't think so. No, because no, Mitchell, I, I think, was I one of our were... first. Yeah, because I know you were introduced yeah. in December of twenty one. Yeah, December of twenty one. He was yeah. introduced. Yeah. Bean was in wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so to answer your question, no. Yeah. Uh, at least not yet. We hope not so. Yeah. I think that I think it's I think it, it's a show. We should get Peter. We should get the team together, and get the show happening. That would be, be great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would. Awesome. I would be one percent down. Yeah, I'm okay. down like, for it. I, I'm up yeah. for it. I'm Let, up for let's it. Let's just do it. Let's make some ideas. Let's make let's, it happen. Let's make yeah. it happen. Right. Where Where are you guys based? Well, I'm in Massachusetts. I've lived here kind of most of my life. Uh-huh. And and Jake and I are in Maryland. We're about an hour from each other. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you, so make a trip to the Big Apple. Oh yes. Have you ever get to the, you ever get to Brooklyn, or Manhattan every once in a while? Uh, we know we know a friend of ours that lives in Brooklyn, I think. So yeah, yeah uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh but you've been to New York, haven't you? I have once. Uh last year I was in New York. Uh I was there, uh my dad and I went to see uh, Sesame Street the musical in, uh up in New York. Uh uh where was it at? Theater Row? I don't remember the exact location and I wish I did. I think that would uh, be a hilarious pilot, like these different puppets characters from different places they all are like okay we're gonna go make it in the big time like we're gonna go to brooklyn and you know you can kind of chronicle their journey and 
meeting the other puppets, you know, like maybe you could get another, another, uh, pup, uh, another character from Brooklyn. Oh yeah. Get together in Bushwick and make a show. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. That, that yes. sounds wonderful. Yes, I, you, yes I, I wish I'd be, be visit New York one day. That would be. <laughs> I hope you, I hope you do, man. New York's wonderful. I, I I've know. I've only been there I once. I, I've only been there once, I said, but I hope to go back at some point. I know. Uh, at some point. I mean, there's so many, there's so many, a lot of puppetry things there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've got you the, know, you've got the museum. Here. The, yeah. Yeah. You, you got the museum, the moving image in New York. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, An exhibit what, that's still. That? happen yeah. around here and that's let's well, well, hear well, well, let's well, hear till the end of the year um uh, yeah december see december 30th yeah we did uh, have a blast time down oh, it was wonderful ago. it was so, it was it was so great <laughs> yeah it was great not only meeting some of our friends in person but just seeing the exhibit in general seeing all those see all those you know puppets after seeing them on tv and actually seeing them in person on tv like, for some, yeah <laughs> it felt weird it felt weird but it felt really surreal yes it did yeah absolutely and it's it's so interesting that 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 bear i mean is bear considered a puppet i guess so even though you you actually get inside the suit yeah full body yeah. puppet yeah well, no one did such an amazing job oh yes. yeah yes, oh my he gosh did. Yes, he did. he's he's wonderful <laughs> it was great <laughs> Yeah, as I understand it, he had, I don't, I did, but his one hand was way up here. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. and one hand was here, and then did he have a, an actual TV screen inside there? Yeah, like a little, yeah. like yes. a like a mini like monitor, so he okay. could see. Yeah. But his vision was, you know, obviously because he was in the thing as opposed to holding up a puppet. He his vision was kind of limited that so he can only see so much but right. yeah he managed to do it really right. well for four seasons oh yeah yes i know everyone who who's been part of that show wants to do that show again because you know or, yeah, yeah or, or you know. something yeah right right or something just sorts. for just for a little short or something yeah i, I know they will be i'm down i want to do it again yeah i want to, i want to you know and that, and right. that's how much the show means not just the three of us but just to People who worked on that, even the cast so many people. crew, and so many fans you know, of the show just meant the bear meant so, so have, many people, you, you know. I, I guess Mitchell, uh, he did uh, after Bear he, uh, and Pooh, he did Big Big World, which mm -hmm. I think yes, is, yes he did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which was Great show. successful, right? Is that, wasn't that a. Yeah, I was on PBS Kids for only like a couple, couple years. Four years, I think. Yeah. Four years. 2006, 2010. Yeah. And and yeah. Pierre Lenz, who did Tutter and Pip, he, he did he did Snook. Yeah, Nikoslav. right, right, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, but I guess since then, I mean, is there any? Did you get the impression that there was any reboot of Bear? Or I mean, they've, they've at least brought back the reruns. But I wonder if well, I mean they did Breakfast uh, with Bear, but that didn't really last uh, okay. very long. I worked on. I did, in fact, work on that a little bit. I think um, Rick Fernandez. Was the oh yeah oh, yes yes he's wonderful yep uh and uh I have a funny story about Rick I remember yeah. uh when I went to visit the the set there was of course there was the set of Bear and then there was the the administrative offices and they were they were all at Steinway Studios in Brooklyn I think but they were quite far from each other. And I remember I, I I went to visit the administrative offices with Rick Fernandez. I was kind of tagging along. I hadn't really met him. I was saying hello to everybody. And all, all of a sudden, he started running. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to run with him. He said, yeah, I do this. I have to. We ran through all the offices and ran to the studio. To the studio. He goes, it's so far away, I run. And I just remember <laughs> feeling it was just very funny. I had met everybody, and then there I was running behind him, going, "Okay, bye." <laughs> it's just a funny, uh, a funny sort of a executive executive moment. It was very funny. Uh -huh. So, um, so since we're about to wrap up very soon, so are there any words you would like to say to people who have been supporting the projects you worked on over the years? Oh yeah. Well, first of all, just thanks for thanks for watching. 
um, and for, to the people who who I worked with, it was I, it's just it's been a wonderful ride. I have such fond memories, and uh, I hope we all get to see each other. Uh, it's in terms of the people I worked with. Um, you know, we live in a fragmented world now with everybody in their uh, various spaces. Uh, I think uh, with all the bad press about social media and and everything, I, I do think social media is great. We wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for social media. Uh, you know, you got to take the, you got to take the good, right? Yeah. Uh, and just be careful with that. And um, uh, keep, let's keep, I think uh, it's, it's um, artistry is so important and all the individual um, efforts that go into the creativity that goes into artistry, whether it's music uh, or making your characters, your puppets. I mean, these are deeply human uh, passions um, and they're, you know, especially now with AI and you can press a button and it can just sort of churn it out. I mean, let, let's not remember that we created all this, all this, all these characters oh, yes. and, the, and, oh, yes. and in, in order to play music, you, you got to start at an early age. So even the slightest bit of music that you hear someone worked hard to to create that and to learn how to make that music the other the power of music is uh is fascinating and and as a composer i've learned this that music um does not need to be loud it can be very quiet and still create a mood um i mean if you put the slight if you take a scene and it might just be some people walking around or doing it, it's something normal and if you put a low ominous tone very quiet underneath it suddenly it's it's going to be a horror movie suddenly something's going to happen it can be the quietest thing that you don't even really know is there uh, or if you put a little just a little tinkly banjo little happy chord suddenly it's like oh okay great everything's fine so um and and even though your characters your puppets i mean those you know, I'm sure you've looked at each of your characters and seen, you know, been very clear. Did the eye, if an eye just does this, this tiny, tiny little gestures evoke, create such emotion and passion. And, and uh, that's what it means to be human. And that's what this all means. So let's keep enjoying each other's work and, and um, enjoying life and art. Absolutely. So if people would like to uh, connect with you, where can people find you? Uh, Julian at JulianHarris.com. I, I get, I, from time to time, I get um, little fan notes or oftentimes in YouTube. Um, there's oh, okay. actually, there's a very, uh, one of the, one of my favorite songs was, was actually from, from the, from Sheep in the Big City. It's called My Voice is So High. And it's sort of a Bee Gees spoof. And uh, I sang it, and there's a character, an animated character who sings it. You might want to check that out. And from oh, time nice. to time, I get, uh, mm -hmm. I get fan mail or. Uh, but yeah, at Julian at JulianHarris.com. Nice, nice, and um... awesome. And your website will be in the description down below, so people can check it out. Yep, I got the website. It's JulianHarris.com. Also, in much in need of updating. I've I've only updated it once <laughs> I, I created it once back when there was uh, no, you know the first websites existed and then this is the latest iteration i think the uh the, yeah the uh the um uh we're all different song is in there is on there nice yeah. nice and the last question that i'm out Matt's about to ask is a question we ask all of our guests at the end go ahead matt thank you chris this podcast of course, it's called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? Well, nostalgia is, is appreciation and joy of what, what you've experienced in the past, where you've come from, especially for 
things that moved you, whether it was a TV show, a uh, kids show, often it's, it's, it's a good, it's, nostalgia is a good feeling. It's a good yes. feeling. It's something that left you with a good taste in your mouth that you always want to revisit. And it's, it's amazing, you know, the human mind is amazing because the smallest little thing, a smell, a cookie, a taste, a tiny little sound, a little guitar riff, can suddenly just bring you back to an entire world of, of where you were. Um, and I think that, and I think nostalgia is a, a extremely important, an important endeavor. I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, in a way, the, 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 uh, another word for nostalgia, it, 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 slightly different is history. I mean, history of course can cover wars and, and terrible things. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's very and history is very very important i mean they say oh yeah those who forget history will be condemned to repeat it and maybe you know, about nostalgia you could say well those who forget nostalgia won't be able to enjoy it you got to yeah. got to go back and remember the great things yeah cuz it's not all bad you know <laughs> it's definitely not all bad you know there's you know of course well Julian, thank you so much for Julian taking the time Sandow. to do this interview. This was a blast. Likewise, guys. I really love what you're doing. You guys are great. Lots oh, thank you. you. Thank you. You as, you as well keep in touch, and we'll uh, let you know when this goes up. Please do. All right. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your day, Julian. Okay, take and care. And have happy holiday season two. Yes, happy holidays. Happy oh, holidays. And, and seriously, about that show, let's 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 think about it. Yes, of course. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Of course. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay. Bye, See Julian. Julian. Yeah. See ya. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from us as well. Yes, yes. it is goodbye yes. from us. Uh, we absolutely enjoyed our time with Julian Harris. Uh, keep on the lookout for more wonderful interviews coming your way. Really, uh, really fun ones coming your way. Um, yes. yes. A lot of great absolutely. Ones. Yes. And as always, what do you say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.